Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you today. Thanks for joining. If you are new here, my name is Jess and I like to talk about things that make you want to sleep with the lights on. And today is going to be no exception, baby, because we are finally diving in to my favorite horror movies from the 2010s. I've done the 80s, I've done the 2000s, sure, I could do the 70s, I could even do the 90s, which I, I will I will at some point, okay? Don't rush me, but <laughs> I really wanted to get into the 2010s because so many of my favorite horror movies come from this era. So many of y'all's favorite movies come from this era as well, so. I always like to start these videos off with just a little side note. These are my opinions. They're my favorites for a reason. I would love to hear your favorites if you want to put them in the comments down below. I will definitely read over it. With that being said, let's start with 2010. Of course, 2010 gave us so many movies that I could pick from, but I'm gonna have to go with the one that really reinvigorated that paranormal horror subgenre, and that's gonna be Insidious. Directed by James Wan, Insidious follows a family in search of help for their son, Dalton, who fell into a coma after a mysterious incident in the attic. Little do they know that there is much more to his endless sleep than meets the eye as they explore the paranormal, rediscover the past, and find out the key to getting their son back once and for all. I think you will understand that I am not exaggerating when I say this movie had the horror community in a chokehold when it first came out. And for good reason. After years and years of the same old wash, rinse, repeat with these jump scares, just the overtly trying to be scary with actually not accomplishing it, we finally get something from James Wan, no less. Insidious brought something fresh and frankly quite terrifying to the table and we all ate that shit up, happily. James Wan gave us a good storyline, good acting, and great jump scares. He also gave us a really wonderful score that set the bar kind of high for horror movies following after. Looking back on it now, did it age well? No, but it's still a good movie and we still owe it a lot of credit for the movies that came after. Moving on to 2011, of course, I'm gonna go with You're Next. In an attempt to mend broken family ties, Audrey and Paul Davison decide to celebrate their wedding anniversary by inviting family members to their weekend estate. The celebration gets off to a rocky start when the mysterious assailants wearing animal masks suddenly attack the house. If you were to take two of my favorite subgenres, home invasion and slasher, put it in one movie with the most badass final girl we've seen in a very long time, the result would be your next. Personally, I really like the pacing of this movie. I really appreciate that they took the time to introduce these characters to us, letting us get somewhat attached to them rather than just the same old, same old, here are a few characters who are dumb, we don't really get into their backstory, they're kind of just throw away, they're gonna die anyways. I feel like that's kind of a cop out and I'm really pleased that your next decided to stray away from that stereotype. The twists and turns, the gore, the kills, and the dark humor are done so very well. The kills in this movie are fantastic. If you like blood and gore, you're gonna love this one. Sharni Vinson as Aaron Harson will be your new role model and if all of that was not enough to convince you to watch your next, Barbara Crampton is also in it, so. There you go. Okay, 2012 is one that I just frankly could not budge on because, of course, my favorite horror movie from that year is Sinister. Directed by Scott Derrickson, washed up true crime writer Ellison Oswald finds a box of Super 8 home movies in his new house, revealing that the murder he is currently researching is the work of a serial killer whose legacy dates back into the 1960s. Y'all know that I am a diehard for this movie. I will defend it to my grave, but I won't go into that much detail for it. If you wanna see something like that, I have a whole video dedicated to talking about this movie. I'll link it below, but if you haven't seen this one already, I am incredibly disappointed. 2013 was a tough one because as much as I love the Evil Dead remake, I really wanted to shine the light on a movie that I don't think gets as much hype as it should, and that is Oculus. Directed by none other than Mike Flanagan, Oculus follows two adult siblings, Kaylee and Tim, who are haunted by the violent deaths of their parents 10 years earlier. Kaylee suspects that their antique mirror is behind the tragedy and contains a malevolent, supernatural force that infects the mind of anyone who gazes into it. Being that it's directed by Mike Flanagan, of course the story is gonna have a great script behind it and the acting performances are just as good as well. We get bits and pieces of the past and what happened to really drive this wedge between the two siblings, but those scenes are interconnected with the present in a way that is just seamless 
easy to follow, and does not feel choppy at all. Some of the imagery from this film is really creepy and will without a doubt give you goosebumps. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, I would hate to spoil the ending of this movie for you, but I really appreciate the direction that Flanagan went with this. I think it's extremely realistic and just, yeah, it packs a punch. If you haven't seen Oculus, please go watch it. It's worth your time. All right, so <laughs> 2014 was without a doubt the hardest year that I had to pick from. Let me just give you some, some examples, okay? So we have The Babadook, Creep, The Taking of Deborah Logan, As Above, So Below, and of course, my pick for this year, It Follows. After a seemingly innocent sexual encounter, 19-year-old Jay is plagued by strange visions and the inescapable sense that someone or something is following her. Faced with this burden, Jay and her friends must find a way to escape the horrors that seem to only be a few steps behind. If you want a movie that will get under your skin, this is the one that, that's gonna do it for you, okay? I, I have chill bumps just thinking about it. While I certainly wouldn't consider It Follows to be the scariest film of 2010, I really believe that a lot of directors learned how to successfully build tension in that feeling of dread by watching this movie alone. This movie is absolutely worth the hype that it gets, and remember kids, if you're gonna hook up with a stranger, just make sure they're not carrying a supernatural sexually transmitted disease. You'll thank me later. 2015 is without a doubt one that you guys saw coming a mile away, and that, 100%, is Robert Eggers' The Witch. There is not a universe that exists where I would pick anything other than The Witch for 2015. In New England in the 1630s, William and Catherine tried to lead a devout Christian life, homesteading on the edge of an impassable wilderness with five children. When their newborn son mysteriously vanishes and their crops begin to fail, the family turns on one another. Anya Taylor-Joy, Ralph Innocent in that accent, Jesus Christ. Also, I don't know if this is like a Southern thing, maybe y'all can tell me, but anything with hooves, 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 anything with hooves is an immediately no. Um, Black Phillip is probably one of the scariest things I've ever seen on the big screen. And whenever I watch this movie, I hate to admit this, but sometimes I like close my eyes a little bit because he scares the crap out of me. Everything about this movie is fantastic. I love Robert Eggers as a director. That's not a surprise, but the tension this movie builds, the atmosphere it creates, the acting, the attention to detail. My God, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I myself am dubbing 2016 the year of foreign horror films. We have Train to Busan, we have The Wailing, which are two that I absolutely love, but it all came down to Raw. Julia de Corneau's French horror film follows a young veterinarian's first year at school when she tastes meat for the first time and develops a craving for flesh. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but even though Raw is about cannibalism, it's done in an almost tasteful way, no pun included. Like, it's like, it's well done cannibalism, if that makes sense. This movie is not for the faint of heart. A lot of people really can't handle it, and that's perfectly okay, but I think when approaching this, you need to look at it from the effect of it's not a movie about cannibalism, it's a movie about a girl who is just trying to find her place in a scary setting, um, who wants to fit in with her sister, who wants to get past these uh, stereotypes of having a, a taboo sexual fetish. And when you kind of look at it from the outside and take away that main, uh, main issue, Raw really turns into a gut-wrenching story of a woman who just wants to fit in, and that's why I appreciate this so much. I love Julia de Corno as a director, I love Titan, and I cannot wait to see what she does next. 2017 was of course another year there was not any competition because this year was dominated by Get Out. A young African-American visits his white girlfriend's parents for the weekend, where his simmering uneasiness about their reception of him eventually reaches a boiling point. Jordan Peele recently called Daniel Kaluuya the Robert De Niro to his Martin Scorsese, and there is no better analogy for what this duo does together. I strongly believe that Jordan Peele is one of the most influential and important directors in Hollywood today, and while I am really, really, really excited for Nope, I just don't think anything is going to be able to top Get Out for me. The perfect mix of black comedy and horror, Get Out is brilliantly written, acted, and executed. And I know without a doubt that it will continue to be one of the defining horror movies for the 2010s. Do I even need to say my favorite horror movie for 2018? I feel like it's just like pretty well known at this point, but 
hereditary. <laughs> okay, I know y'all knew this one was coming, but I don't, I don't know what you want me to do about it. When Ellen, the matriarch of the Graham family, passes away, her daughter's family begins to unravel cryptic and increasingly terrifying secrets about their ancestry. The more they discover, the more they find themselves trying to outrun the sinister fate they have seen to inherit it. This is a perfect movie in my opinion. Every performance is perfect and let's not forget the fact that it's absolutely terrifying. I might just do like an entire video dedicated to this movie. That way I can get all of my ranting out and y'all won't ever have to hear it again. Actually, I, I lied. You probably will. But yeah, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. So let's go on to 2019. We have come to 2019, the first year before 2020, in case you weren't aware. <laughs> idiot. When I was doing a little bit of research for this video, a big theme that I saw was a lot of people felt like there wasn't good horror this year, which I was really surprised by because we got Dr. Sleep, which don't sleep on Dr. Sleep, all right? It's a good movie. And also we got The Lighthouse, so I don't I don't see where the, where the problem is, but um, my favorite movie for 2019 is neither of those. It's actually ready or not. A bride's wedding night takes a sinister turn when her eccentric new in-laws force her to play a terrifying game. First things first, if your in-laws try to get you to play a game on your wedding night, get out of there while you can. I have loved Samara Weaving ever since I saw her in The Babysitter on Netflix and I literally follow her every move. I can't wait to see what she does next. Ready or Not is so fun, it's brutal, it's gory, it's plain ridiculous, but it successfully fits into the horror movie niche while still giving us these goofy ass kills. It's such a comfort watch for me. This is the one I go to whenever I have friends who maybe want to venture into horror a little bit, but don't want to jump straight into something like Hereditary. Also, I don't know about y'all, but that final shot of her sitting on the steps iconic. All right, you guys, those are my favorite horror movies from the 2010s. What do you think? What did I miss? Please let me know down below which of your favorites that I left off. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video, but it would really make my day if you just hit that subscribe button below. Thanks again, you guys, for your endless support. Let me know what topic you want me to cover next. Thanks again, you guys. Stay creepy.